Hello and welcome to day 62 of our 102 days reading through the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts. Thank you for being here. It's for Tuesday, October the 1st, 2024. We are now in the last quarter of 2024 and we're starting Acts chapter 4 verse 23 going through chapter 5 verse 11. But before we can do any of that, hit that subscribe bar and then the notification bell when it comes up so you can be notified when content is added to the channel. Comment on these videos, like these videos, share these videos. Yeah, you know what to do. And today, uh, Acts chapter 4, and if you remember, the apostles Peter and, and John had healed a man at the beautiful gate of the temple uh, they got arrested, and they, the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin, demanded to know how they knew all this stuff and where they got their authority. Uh, they escaped. They went uh, uh, to meet other brethren. They're out now, and they're praying for boldness. And we'll see some real Christian charity to finish this off with a lesson about lying and giving. So let's get started with our reading. Acts chapter 4, verse 23. And being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord, saying, Lord, you are God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David have said, Why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word, by stretching out your hand to heal, and the signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Now the multitudes of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed were or was his own. But they all had all things in common, and with great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. So see, they're giving witness to the resurrection of Jesus from the get-go, pretty much. Within a decade, I'm not sure what the timeline, how far this is from Pentecost, but it was definitely within that first decade that the resurrection was being proclaimed. Verse 34, Nor was there anyone among them who lacked, for all who had or who were possessors of land or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet and they distributed to each as anyone had need. And Joseph, who or yeah, Joseph, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus, having ha having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now notice, nobody told them they had to do it. They just simply went out and did what needed to be done. Chapter 5. Now here's where it's going to start getting gritty. With Ananias and Sapphira. Now verse 1 of chapter 5. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira his wife sold the possession. And he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it and brought a certain part, and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God." Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things, and the young men arose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. Now it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, Tell me, whether you sold the land for so much? 
She said, yeah, for so much. Then Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have carried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men who came in and found her dead carrying and carrying her out buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. Yeah, I think that would scare me just a little bit to see a man and a woman that yesterday I was talking to and they were healthy. All of a sudden they're buried. Hmm. Don't really know. Other than they lied to God. They lied to the Holy Spirit. And this is one of the refutations of the idea that there is no Trinity because you would, he said uh, in verse 4, you have not lied to men, but to God. But really, who was the lying to? The Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit must be deity. And then Peter, uh, or rather um, Ananias, here's the thing. They could have kept all the money. Huh? Why? Why? Well, yeah, look at what Peter said. Verse 3, Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? After that, uh, it was sold, was it not in your own control? See, they could have kept back the entire proceeds. That would have been okay. They could have given the entire proceeds. They could have given, I don't know how much it was. Let's just put it in easy to understand modern American terms. Let's say they sold it for $10,000. And they gave $5,000 to the church but held back five. What th they did was they lied. They brought the $5,000 and said, here, here's the, all the proceeds from the sale of that land that we just closed on. Paraphrasing a little. That was the problem was that they lied. It wasn't they were keeping it. That would have been fine to keep that money. It would not have been a sin. Well, let's look at a couple of things here. Uh, William Barclay, in his uh, commentary, Acts of the Apostles, uh, commenting on Peter uh, getting sprung from the joint and John getting sprung, said, In this passage we have the reaction of the Christian church in the hour of danger. It might have been through... Uh, thought that when Peter and John returned with their story, a deep depression would have fallen on the church as they looked ahead uh, with, to the troubles which were now bound to descend upon them. The one thing that never even struck them was uh, to obey the Sanhedrin's command not to speak uh, anymore. Uh, they didn't take that into their mind. They just kind of blew it off is the impression I get. And so Barclay asserts that in their mind, the, early, the minds of the early disciples, at that moment came some great convictions in their lives. Uh, in the, uh, in, they came a tide of strength that they were fired up and probably running on some adrenaline uh, because of what had happened. But they also had the conviction of the power of God. They, they knew what they believed and, and why they were believing it. And they had the conviction of the, of the futility of human rebellion. How are you going to rebel against God? And then they set before themselves a remembrance of Jesus. They remembered him in the Lord's Supper every week. That's the purpose of it, which is why we take it every week to keep it all fresh uh, in our mind. They prayed for courage. They did not pretend that they could face all this in their own strength. That is a huge mistake modern Christians make. Well, I just don't want to bother God with this. It's a small thing. Pray about it. Take it to them. If, if, whether it's something as big as you just found out you got cancer or Parkinson's or you're headed for a layoff or whatever the situation is, pray for courage. I've known a couple of people who ended up in the hospital with a roommate or two and converted one of them or came close to doing it. You could do that too. Just pray for the courage and God will take it from there. He'll help you out. And then finally, we see the results of the gift of the Spirit. They were comforted, and we get comforted, I believe, in a non-miraculous indwelling of the Holy Spirit. But they found courage and strength that they needed to be able to do uh, the, what was needed here in chapter 4. Uh, there's a lot of charitable work going on. Chapter 4, we see Luke supplying a summary to describe the progress of the church, and in this case, the summary points ahead rather than behind because Luke's giving these words to prepare for the accounts that follow. 
they were a sharing church. And they did it voluntarily. They didn't wait for the government to come in and start redistributing. They took care of business. And even today, there have been some hurricane activity down in the Gulf, and some people have gotten hurt. There are relief supplies on their way already. Because Americans, we just have it in our uh, ingrained in us that we help people. And Christians especially need to remember that. We do help people. We reach out. We don't. I've been involved in two different disaster reliefs. We didn't care what skin color you were. We didn't care what religion you were. You came in, you needed help, you got it. And that's the way that it should be. One in heart and mind describes the spiritual unity of the believers. The sense of oneness extended to a concern for the practical needs of one another in a spirit of voluntary sharing uh, don't, uh, dominated the church. Possessions were shared so that there was no one needy among them. And that's a great thing to do. If, if, you, if you need money for rent, and I've got a few extra bucks here, I'll help you out. But you can't keep coming back and, and become dependent on me. And nowhere in the Bible is that supported or taught or even implied. People were to work. Later on, Paul's going to tell the Thessalonians, if a man won't work, neither shall he eat. And there's every indication, says uh, this writer, uh, Dennis uh, Gartner in his uh, College Press NIV commentary says, every indication in this text is that the sharing was not the kind which characterized the Jewish sect at Qumran, where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. The communal living was enforced in writing. In the Jerusalem church, those who had possessions determined in what way they might assist the needs of other believers. Now, I don't mind helping people out, but I like to have a say in it so that I know if the person I'm helping is going to use it if, if he needs rent money. Here's, a, here's $500 for your rent. I want to be sure it's going to the landlord. So a lot of times in that case, I'll say, well, who's your landlord? Okay, I'll, I'll call him and I'll get it straightened out. Uh, because I've had theft of things and, and money go missing and things over the years. So I try to take some precautions. And this is an artist's depiction of Ananias and Sapphira. And then about three hours later, his wife came in and uh, suffered the same fate. This is uh, uh, an artist depiction that's uh, apparently Ananias there in the crowd of people. But he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it. And she was in on it. This, was, this is a conspiracy, not co-conspirators. There's no such thing as a co-conspirator because a conspiracy by definition is two people. And so here they are. And they are conspiring uh, about what to do with this money. But notice something here. They have not lied to, God, uh, to men, but to God. And the Bible.art website describes this as a scene depicting a person introspecting, surrounded by symbolic artifacts of ownership and falsehood. This narrative scene is in the style of digital art, mirroring the crisp color contrasts and pixel precision that digital art often exhibits. Uh, uh, introspect. I never thought of this tied into Ananias and Sapphira. But with the reaction of the crowd, the people who saw them and knew that they had lied, that's probably what they were doing. Okay, wait a minute now. They lied to the Holy Spirit, which is really God, apparently. So what could happen to me if I do the same thing? So I could see them wanting to stop and slow down and say, eh, we need to think about this. Because that could be me one day. Somebody once asked, you know, if, if God were to say, I'm wiping out evil tonight at midnight, would you still be here at 1201? Hmm. Something to contemplate. And as we bring it to a close, we're going to pray for the church, our local congregation, Christians, and congregations throughout the world. So join me in prayer if you would. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for another day of life. And we really want to pray for the, your universal church, Lord, wherever those uh, people meet. And we want to pray for members of the local congregations as well. Help our local congregation here to grow. We've had some baptisms lately. Help it to take root. Help us to be the tillers of the good soil and, and get the soil uh, healthy so it can grow. Help us, Lord, to say the right things as we reach out to these new sisters. And we want to pray throughout the world that the church will be firm in the truth uh, and pray for it in those countries like uh, North Korea and Cuba and places where it's oppressed. So I pray for those people to be able to stand up and proclaim your truth, even preaching truth to power. 
Thank you for Jesus and all that he does. It's in his name we pray. Amen. If you have any questions, you can send them to me to timothy4.2.3 at gmail.com. You can even send a prayer request. I'll be glad to pray with you about whatever's going on in your life. You can leave your comments in the comment section below. That's going to wrap it up for today. We will see you in the next video. I am done and I am out.